Hello everyone, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming. So I'd like to precise first uh, on my uh, presentation that I won't speak about the dangers of YouTube and bad issues because uh, it's very big topics. It's very big to topics. And um, I will concentrate, I concentrate my analyze, analyze uh, only on French uh, YouTubers. I don't know if you, if you know some. <laughs> Uh, and um, yeah, it's not about YouTube, it's partly on YouTuber, the character of the YouTuber, the, this influencer that you are probably part of. Okay, so why did we choose YouTube instead of Instagram or Facebook? Um, first, because the platform has grown considerably during the last decades and it's, not, it's now matched by a billion persons in the world, everywhere, everywhere at any time. Uh, not really everywhere, but it's another <laughs> subject. Um, it's, also, it's also because personally, <coughs> I haven't watched TV for ages. Uh, I spend a lot of time on my computer and so I watch uh, YouTube uh, where you can find everything you look for, you can find recipes, uh, lifestyle advice, <laughs> etc. So this is uh, something uh, I find very interesting. And um, another reason is because it's a homemade video and then you can uh, do do it yourself popularization. And uh, in this presentation I will be I will be showing you five points about how YouTubers can be efficient catalysts for science popularization. This is the five points. So the first step before going any further is to be original. Uh, basically, YouTuber doesn't or rarely use the proper name in the case of scientific channels, but one that refers to the themes they choose. For example, linguistica it's uh, specialized in history languages. They have to select the way they will be addressing, addressing to their public, straight to camera, uh, and so showcase their own person, the voice of a narration or a character explaining the contents. Uh, maybe you know extra history or history buff. They are American YouTubers and they use characters. Uh, secondly, they don't have to own the legitimate background. So I will talk about this later, but they are not, they are not historians or archaeologists. The second points, it's uh, choosing a strategy, uh, an angle, to develop the field and to get the attention of the audience, using catchy and uh, un catchy anecdotes or very well-known references like movie, compare reality of fiction, uh, uh, it's very um, using uh, famous references like uh, Indiana Jones or Game of Thrones, uh, it's uh, very speaking to the, to the audience. And um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this last video uh, with Indiana Jones are mainly focused to demonstrate that Indiana Jones and Lara Croft are more robust <coughs> than proper archaeologists. Uh, the, the third point I want to, to present is um, about having a community. But what is a community? A YouTuber is nothing without a community. This is one of the most important important point here. The whole point of this community is based on Web 2.0, the pa participatory, participatory part of every social media. Um, <coughs> here, the issue is to create, cre create a key community on the science field. When you look at YouTube communities in detail, one point is coming out the surface. Most of the channels are based on entertaining content. The difficult part here is to interest people to science-based channel with small parts of entertaining content. As soon as the ID, the ID is original enough, a community starts to emerge around the YouTuber who has created it. Concretely, the community is formed by all people who subscribe, subscribe to a channel. They can be active, like uh, posted, co posting comments, proposing new subjects, reacting to the channels in video, etc or completely passive. The fourth point is to have a scientific recognition. Another difficult point because most of YouTubers who make science popularization aren't researchers. Researcher. Often they just people 
who are interested in science. As scientific sources <coughs> are numerous and available to almost everyone with the full internet access, these people are in position to create correct content in terms of scientific accuracy. And why they do, they do it well. Scientific institutions are sometimes rewarding with the collaboration. We're talking here about museums um, and scientific channels like Arte or Archive that found the provided contents on YouTube and wanted to use them for projects. This is um, actually an exchange of legitimacy between YouTube profanes and science, scientific institutions. And the last uh, point is, um, is the level of impact that can have a YouTuber on its, in its content. Nowadays, we sometimes call YouTubers or content creators of other platforms like Instagram, influencers. Uh, and as YouTube platform is growing exponentially, they increase the level of impact on people and institutions. Some of them enlarge, enlarge the content's production to books, festivals, lectures, TV shows to ask questions on how they can use their position to be more accurate about science popularization. So, oh yes, sorry. <laughs> this is a, a book uh, from Nota Bene, one of the most famous history YouTubers in France. And uh, this is um, a PhD uh, uh, thesis, and she's talking about her uh, uh, thesis. So, to conclude, <laughs> YouTuber can be considered an actor as actor of science. He has a role to play on how interest people to it and how we new old institutions, museums, to help them to impact people differently. So this paper meant to show how important YouTube had become and, prof and professionals started to use them more and more. Okay. Thank you.